Okay, YouTubers, this is The Angry Prepper. So today's episode, we're going to talk about the Kenosha Conundrum. Now, yes, that's a bit of a tongue twister, but we're going to talk about a situation that happened and is happening in Kenosha, Wisconsin. Now, let's start with the, the first thing that set everything in motion, which was Jacob Blake's shooting. Now, all I'm going to say about Jacob Blake's shooting is probably a lot, but I'm trying to keep it down to a nutshell in the guy was an asshole. All right, you do not sit there and fight with the cops. You do not sit there and get tased, get up, walk over to your car, saying you're going to get a gun, and then reach under the seat of your car. And then wonder why you got seven bullets in your back. Now, for those of you that are already pissed off behind that comment, seven bullets was a lot. But there's a reason why he had seven bullets in his back, and I'll explain that a little later. But let's start with Jacob Blake and his bullshit. The guy was a career criminal. The guy was he was criminaling, guys. He was he was doing what he does. He was being a fucking criminal. The reports of him breaking up a fight were bullshit. It was a domestic violence call or domestic call. And he was breaking up a fight between two women. It was possible that he was involved in that argument. When the cops got there, that was for him to shut up and let the cops handle it. But instead, he wanted to play big man. He gets into a fight with them. They tase him. He says, I'm going to get my gun. He walks over to his car and he gets shot seven times in the back. At some point in that altercation, Blake should have fucking just listened, laid on the ground, or listened and let the cops handle before it even got to him being tased. But nonetheless, he wanted to be a tough guy, and now the tough guy's in a fucking wheelchair. So, again, guys, he was resisting arrest. That's why he got tased. And then he gets up. Now, there is an argument, and, I, and, and a lot of people will probably uh, agree and disagree with this. Why didn't the cops just tackle that skinny motherfucker? The kid was made of sticks and bones, right? So why not just fucking tackle him? You know, why not throw him to the ground? Why not? I mean, listen, again, we can all Monday morning quarterback, but looking at the situation at hand, I would have dropped the kid, right? I mean, I would have definitely clipped his jaw or, or hell, a pistol whip in the back of the neck would have probably sufficed. Nonetheless... When you are in a high-speed moment, and for those of you, a lot of you guys on YouTube, you don't have high-speed jobs. You guys sit behind a fucking desk, you're probably a, a service or a waiter, and I'm not demeaning any of those jobs. I'm saying that you're not in a high-speed situation. You don't have to think on your feet. And for those of you who've never had to think on your feet, you don't know what it's like. Military guys, cops, firemen, EMTs, correction officers, you have to think on your feet. You have to think... Uh, the situation out and you have to think about it fast when it happens right that being said while that situation was happening for that cop while that situation was happening for jacob blake it was unfolding fast both the cop and jacob blake or the cops rather and jacob blake were probably in that moment thinking right now looking at it they were probably both thinking irrationally right both of them both the cop and jacob blake um, there is two faults to this. That is without a doubt. But nonetheless, if you listen to the cops, if you get tased, guess what Jacob Blake could have done? He could have walked into the courtroom, sued them, and won. Now he's in a fucking wheelchair. He's probably going to win the lawsuit. But what good is that? Right? The guy's paralyzed for the rest of his fucking life because he wanted to be a tough guy in front of his kids. Guys, listen. Uh, Jacob Blake was wrong. That's the bottom line. The cops could have figured out a better way to subdue him other than shooting him seven times in the back. But again, I wasn't there. We weren't there. When you have to think on your toes, when you have to switch uh, momentums in the middle of a shitty situation, guys, you could fucking argue uh, what they could have done to you blue in the face, including myself. I could argue till I'm blue in the face what the cops should have done differently, what Jacob Blake should have done differently. But nonetheless, what happened happened, and now we're faced with this bullshit. Now, Making Jacob Blake the victim, another black man being shot. There were 40 motherfuckers shot here in the city uh, over the weekend. I think three were killed. No one's crying about them, right? So, again, 40 people shot versus the one dude that was shot in the last two months, or, or a month, rather, sorry. Guys, the math is off. Again, way more black men dying out here 
in just this city alone than cops killing black men. Jacob Blake should have just got on the ground and he wouldn't have got tased. He should have listened. He wouldn't be in a wheelchair. Bottom line. And let's not forget the fact, guys, he was reaching for a weapon. The gun turned out to be a knife, but nonetheless, he was not going to tickle the cops with his knife. He was going to hurt him. That's why he got shot. There was a weapon under the seat, period. There are videos upon videos of cops being shot and killed because they hesitated. This cop didn't want to be one of those cops. That's why he didn't hesitate. Yes, the cop was probably thinking to himself, seven was a bit much too, but in a high speed situation, guys, you don't know what you're going to do until you're ready. So for those of you who are uh, those you know, keyboard warriors, you can go screw yourself because you're not one of those dudes. You're not a high speed job. You are a pencil pusher, a server, or a mechanic or some shit. Again, not demeaning those jobs, but you don't know what it's like to be in a high speed situation, period. So to make a comment on it, listen, we all have our opinions. You can make an opinion on it, but to sit there and say, you would have done this, you're full of shit because you don't know what you have done until you were in that situation. So let's talk about the other problem we're seeing with uh, Kenosha, that stupid little kid, Kyle Rittenhouse. Now, there are people saying he's a hero. He's not. They're calling him a legend. He's not. They're calling him a patriot. He is not. He is none of those. He's a little spoiled brat who fucking went down there to help store owners protect their property. That is very commendable in itself. I agree with that. The problem was he went off on his own. Whether he got separated from the group, whether he was patrolling the streets and, and, and you know, got separated, that, that needs to be said if that happened. But if that didn't happen, he went off playing John Wick. Guess what, guys? Now he was, in a, he was put in an impossible situation. He put himself in that situation by shooting three fucking guys. Now... Before we get to the three guys he shot, he didn't know that one of them was a pedophile, reportedly a pedophile, right? He's not going to go, that guy looks like a pedophile, let me shoot him. That didn't happen. What happened was he was attacked and he was defending himself, rightfully so. But nonetheless, a 17-year-old should not have been out in the street with a long rifle unsupervised. Because according to Wisconsin law, you can carry as long as you're with adult supervision. But he wasn't with adult supervision. That's where he fucked up. He was carrying an illegal firearm at that point, guys. He was breaking the law, period. We're not going to sit there and I'm not going to argue with you about semantics. Well, you know, he's being a patriot. Yes, he was being a patriot if law was out of the window, which, yes, you can argue that there's no law around that because they're letting people burn. Right, there are 17-year-olds burning down homes and shit, but then he should have stayed with the property he was protecting, not gone off on his own. That's where he fucked up. That's why he's an asshole, because he knew better. Instead, he wanted to walk off and, and protect the public. But instead, he wound up killing two guys and injuring one. Now, now here's the problem. The three people he shot, two of them, or, or actually all three of them, they weren't protesters, guys. They were rioters. They were rioting, breaking, and destroying shit. I get that. He shot guys who attacked him. In one instance, he tried to run away from the situation, but once he got cornered, his only way out was to shoot. That I will, I will absolutely agree with him on. Shooting those who were trying to fucking do harm to him and kill him because they threw a Molotov cocktail at him. But the kid's not a hero. We're not going to sit there and make this kid a fucking hero because he was fucking wrong. We're not going to make Jacob Blake a fucking victim because he was wrong. They were both wrong. This is the issue Wisconsin's having and America's having right now because you got people talking, talking about uh, Jacob Blake being a victim and you got people talking about Kyle Ritten being a fucking hero. Neither of them are fucking victims or heroes. They're both fucking assholes. They're assholes that are compounding the situation that's happening to America. America is unraveling, and then we have two more assholes throwing their hat in the ring. Now what? Now, now the division's starting because you got people, again, calling uh, Rittenhouse a hero. You got people calling Blake a victim. Fuck those two guys. Really. Fuck the both of them because they are making a situation worse. A 17 year old should not be out playing with a fucking rifle. He should be at home playing fucking Fortnite or watching YouTube on how to pick up a chick. He should not be fucking out there trying to save the world. I get that he was trying to do a good thing, but now look at the fucking, the, the, the uh, situation he's in. Now, Rittenhouse is being charged with first degree 
intentional murder and first degree reckless murder which I think both of those two charges might be dropped though they they charge him with it they might get him off those they might get him off those two charges but illegal possession of a weapon as a minor that's the charge that's going to stick and reckless endangerment those two are probably going to stick because again he should not have been out there he should have been fucking home or he should have stayed with the property he was protecting and not moved from there that was a problem this kid wanted wandered off on his own and i think this kid knew what he was doing because if i was 17 years old i would have probably done the same thing i'd have well, let's see what i can get into or let's see what i see and as soon as he was seeing shit listen the video that's out there about Kyle Rittenhouse is 10 minutes long. All you see from that video is him being attacked. You don't know what was said. You don't know if he said something first. You don't know if some BLM asshole said something to him. That's the issue we're having right now with, this, uh, with the video. The video just shows what happened to him from a distance. And you can see from the distance he was being attacked. That's without a doubt. But you don't know what happened. You don't know what sparked what. That's where more video is going to have to come into play. But nonetheless, guys... Kyle Rittenhouse was wrong, all right? I'm not going to sit here and side with a little fucking asshole who thought he was going to fucking save the world with his fucking AR. Now, here's my bigger issue with all of this. Again, the whole conundrum is now the victims, the, shoot, the, the people that died, the three guys that got shot, the two that died. Here's the problem. They're making them out to be fucking uh, victims, Oh, woe is me. Oh, my, my son, he was such a good angel. Fuck your son, all right? Fuck those assholes because they were out there rioting. They weren't protesting. They were burning and breaking shit. Do I know those three guys specifically were? No. But they were out there with a group of dudes that were breaking and destroying shit. They weren't protesting. They didn't look like they were marching down the street in an orderly fashion. They attacked a kid with a skateboard. And another kid, a, a, a medic, if you will, that asshole had a handgun on him. You see him reaching for the handgun in the video before Kyle even knew that this guy was coming up on him. So when the guy finally came up on him, somebody hit him in the head with a uh, skateboard, and then the guy with the witch call tried to pull on him. That dude hesitated. That's why he caught the bullet in his arm. Nonetheless, these three dudes were not fucking heroes. They weren't victims. They were fucking assholes. So now, guys, we have five assholes. We have the three protesters, sorry, the three rioters that were shot, and Jacob Blake and Kyle Rittenhouse. Five assholes playing a fucking hero victim card. Kyle's not playing the hero card, the public is. Jacob Blake isn't playing the victim card from what I heard, the public is. The public is also making these three rioters protesters and making them look like victims when nobody is innocent in this fucking situation. All right guys, so sorry for this long ass video, but I had to get it out there because I'm fucking pissed off and enough's enough. We're, we're, we're headed down the road of civil war. That's definitely coming because look at everything that's going on. You had the uh, what you call the boys fighting with Antifa uh, what, last week or earlier this, this week. The shit's getting out of control, guys, and it's only going to get worse because no one's stepping in to stop it. None of these politicians are like, whoa. Let's break this shit up. Let's lock everyone up. Let's lock up the Antifa. Let's lock up the Proud Boys. Let's lock up all these motherfuckers and sort it out. But instead, they're letting assholes burn the streets down. Right? Now, Proud Boys are doing their thing. They were fucking actually protecting property and fighting against Antifa. I get that. But if you want to solve the situation, everyone has to get locked up, clean the goddamn streets, and start all over again. Right? A painter with a canvas doesn't paint on top of a mess. He cleans the slate, starts over anew. That's what needs to happen right now to get all of this shit under control. But these liberal fucking uh, politicians don't want that. They want anarchy and chaos, guys. So if you don't see what's going on, it's time for you to wake the fuck up. All right, guys, so this is The Angry Prepper. Thank you for watching. You can like and subscribe to this channel. You can follow me on Instagram, Facebook, Tumblr, and Twitter. And other than that, guys, thank you for watching.